Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Data Art Conversations with Sports Betting Industry Leaders. Today on episode two, we'll be discussing sports betting customer acquisition. And we are joined by two very special guests, Daniel Kostelski and Joe Kostelski, co-founders at Chalkline. I'm also joined, as usual, by Matt Schatz and Kevin Twitchell, advisors here at Data Art. And I'm Russell Karp. Chalkline Sports, I think a lot of folks have heard about them. Uh, but could you please provide the audience an overview of, of what you guys do? Sure. Uh, real briefly, uh, we're a games as a service provider uh, to to the industry. Uh, our clients are casinos and, and sports books, uh, media companies, uh, teams and leagues. Really, anyone that 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 is trying to wrap their arms around uh, sports betting inclined sports fans, uh, collect uh, data and and build databases. Um, and we do that through our proprietary platform, uh, which creates uh, free to play games at scale. Uh, as an as an example, last year in, in 2020, we built over 6,000 free to play games uh, for our 20 plus clients, and that the game our games were played by uh, played over four million times. So so we um, you know so we provide personalized, regionalized free to play games to our clients. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. And uh, what's working in acquisition right now? And and can you tell us how strategies uh, and tactics have changed over time? Sure, sure. So, so what I mean, you know, obviously, what we're seeing, um, we're, we're seeing varying, uh, you, you know, strategy and tactics by by the operators, depending on really the, the size of their bud, of their balance sheets. Um, you know, there's a there's a lot of of national national coverage for 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 brands. Um, and but but really what it's what you know what it comes down to is uh you know what is working on a on a state by state basis um you know we're we're seeing lots of uh you know certainly above the above the line advertising um but then you know at, at its you know down at its at its more regional and local level it's really about figuring out who in each one of these states um you know is is interested in sports betting and and or uh you know or or maybe has has bet illegally in the past and and how do you and how do you acquire those customers? Um, you know, lots of deals with media companies right now between sports books and 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 and, and major media companies, and, and not just on a on a major national scale. We're seeing those, um, you know, those types of deals happening, uh, you know, locally and, and regionally, and maybe just relevant for a couple of states. Um, and so I, I think that what what we're seeing is you know a lot of the same tactics. I think FanDuel and DraftKings are are are, are using you know tactics that they had used uh, previously while. They were um, well. They only had the DFS product. Uh, we're seeing some European operators come over and and just use a lot of the a lot of the same types of of, of marketing that they had had been in the past. Um, you know, trying to build SEO presence. Um, you know, certainly paid media, um, and then augment that with with above the line. And, and how, how well has that European model worked in, in the states? Because um, from uh, at least my experience with just the European. Uh, uh, operators trying to get into the uh, United States, uh, you know, some have done it well, others, you know, ha- hasn't gone as smoothly. Um, what have you experienced? So, so I, I think the challenge maybe that 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 doesn't exist, um, you know, where, where uh, you know where other operators have have, have operated is is just that you know it's just the, the state by state rollout and and the and the and the disparities between those states. You know, it was Nevada on one side of the country, and then it, all of a sudden it became you know New Jersey, mm-hmm. um, and then it was Iowa, which is you know in the Midwest, and and so you, you know we're starting you, you know now there's 25 states that are legal. You know, I think 18 or 19. That that are are operational, um, and, and that that poses a massive challenge for you know for these brands, um, you know getting you know just getting simple things right like state level um, you know marketing, uh, you know state level activations, uh, you know it's it's uh, it's 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 hard. There's a lot of you know I think the operators are juggling a lot of a lot of balls, and 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 one of them is just let me just get operational in this particular state, and then we'll worry about you know. Tweaking the, the 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 top of the funnel and, and the funnel down to 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 getting people to sign up and, and deposit into my into my sports book, um, you know. But it's it's really that that localization and that regionalization. I think that that's that's a challenge for for all operators, not just you know not just the Europeans. Yeah, great, thank you. Kind of jumping in here, picking up on that, you know, yeah. talking about like the localization and the small players and 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 how the market's evolving. Yeah. So acquisition tools. 
I think you guys are sitting pretty. I mean, because that's that is got to be a real important part of how this business is going to evolve in the U.S. So, are you are you seeing more demand now from the big players for acquisition tools, or is it from the smaller players that are trying to establish themselves in the U.S.? Right. So, so I think the first wave uh, that we saw was really about market access. Do do I have, um, you know, do I have access to uh, this state or that state, or or what does that look like? And and I think that while we're still st- still starting to see market access deals, um, I think there there's certainly a, a a push now to okay, I am in particular states. How do I now acquire customers uh, in those particular states? And 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 what is is my arsenal in order to do that? I mean, obviously, you know, Chalkline feels pretty good about about you know the free to play industry in, in the U.S. and 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 where we sit. Um, I you know I I can't help but but think that um, there's going to be more and more and more focus on uh, customer acquisition um, at at a at a hyper level at a local level. Um, you know, once once everybody gets settled and, and has an operation in a particular state, they've launched. Uh, you know, it's it's four or five or six months after launch, and and the the operational team in that state is now saying, okay, you know, what is working and what's not, and 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 certainly, you know, acquisition tools are are, are like 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 free to play is going to be critical. I mean, we we do know that from uh, operation. You know, if we look at some of the ba- major operators, they've got you know almost everybody's got some form of a free to play games, and they're probably working. Working, um, you know, at, at various effect, uh, effectiveness. It's and not, yeah, it's, is your, go ahead, Matt. Sorry. General, sorry, is your is the general mindset these days on the acquisition side like this is a land grab? We've got to sign up people quick because once they pick a platform, they're unlikely to switch. Or is it this is going to take several years to play out? Let's really figure out what works first, what doesn't work, and we can go whole hog on marketing budgets and acquisition plays a little bit down the road. Right. So um, I will say it's it's a it's a little bit of a land grab that as soon as as soon as a, a state legalizes those first couple of cohorts of players are incredibly valuable for for these books. And, and that's and that's pretty well pretty well known. If we look at a state like New Jersey, where where they've been legal now for you know two and a half plus plus years, um, you know, you know, where are they before they, you know, until we hit maturity, you know, the, the first three years are, are pretty aggressive growth, um, you know, for, for, I think we're going to see for any state and we're seeing, and, and, and as we have seen in Europe, those first three years are, are pretty chaotic. Everybody's just trying to, trying to get players. Um, the second two years, uh, you know, it's, it starts to, you know, the, the growth starts to maybe decelerate. And then by fifth and sixth year, you're probably dealing with the mature market, you know, a, as it comes to so so there's there's a lot of enthusiasm to get in there and and to and to and to grab your arms as many around as many you know potential sports betters and, and current sports betters as possible um and and, and yes yeah, so, so so i i i, I where each one of these states is at, at different uh, levels of, of maturity. And, and I just ventured to say, and, and then there are going to be some operators that are probably that we don't even know of right now and, and are not in the United States that are more than happy coming into a very mature uh, 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 environment and, and industry and, and, you know, with a great product and they, and they'll sit there and, and, and try and figure out how they're going to, how they're going to go into, in, in, into these various states as it, as it, as it relates to how many sports books, you know, players typically have, um, you know, there, there's a couple of challenges in Europe. It's, you know, three and a half, four books, uh, you know, per, per player. And, and that's a mature market. There's not a lot of friction to sign up. There's not a lot of friction to, to, to maybe, um, you know, to maybe deposit. Whereas I think what we're seeing in the United States is there is so much friction in that registration. Uh, you know, almost like players are like, whew, okay, I finally got through this registration process. I have finally deposited money. They've, the KYC is, is all good. I, I think I'm going to stick with this book for a little bit. And so I think we, we're not seeing, you know, maybe, you know, books per player as, as we have seen in, in other parts of the world, but, but we're going to get there. The, the, you know, all of those friction points are, are going to be mitigated at some stage, you know, pre- probably pretty quickly. And one thing that uh, Daniel and, and Jason are, you know, the three of us co-founder Chalkline always say is, you know, it's still the first quarter of sports betting in the United States. And so when we think about, there's a lot of focus 
when a new state launches. So each operator really focuses in on that first cohort and they're gonna report those numbers pretty roundly if they're really good numbers. Um, but I also just think if, if you can remember back to when New Jersey launched, it was an epic moment. Uh, nobody's talking about the 18th monthly cohort at this point right now. And so I think really the, 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 the people, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, I'm sure, but it's, you know, what's, what's the next phase and, yeah. and the next phase is, is really going to come back to a lot of, of, of blocking and tackling that you can do long-term as a company when it comes to acquisition and then when it comes to retention. And, and that's a that's a good point. I, I think that you know we 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 talk to a lot of people about that that initial launch, and and I think that there's there is some assumption, you know, from from some of the operators and the and the, and the sports books that you know if they build it, you know, people are going to come and and everybody's going to sign up on the you know in the first two months, and then that's it. Then the state's going to be you know at a, it, it takes it, it's really really hard to sign up customers on my sports book. You know, people would come to my you know, registration page 10, 11 times before they even started the registration process. So, you know, it depends, you know, t- walking people through that that process of registering and deposit and then placing that wager, the, the, the need for acquisition tools, um, you, you know, there will forever be a need for, for acquisition tools because everybody is, is, is in a slightly different state of, of education. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in New Jersey and, I'm, we, you know, we're just getting inundated, you know, with the marketing at all times. You know, you watch yeah, the Devils it, and yes. it's interruptions in the games and then uh, yes. and then they find me on social media, too. You know, <laughs> so it's so how how important is that two screen approach, you know, yeah. for, for acquisition with using socials and, and knowing that everybody's on two screens? But how, right. how, do you, how is how does that work in your success? You know, well, I, I, the 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 importance of mobile. I, I think that New Jersey is a great example of the importance of of, of mobile. You know, it's probably ninety percent of all the wagers that, that that come in on mobile, and and certainly you know the the pan, and that's pandemic aside. Um, you know, certainly during the pandemic when when you know when there was no retail you know opportunity, um, and, and so you know providing you know providing people the 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 ability to 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 entertain themselves you know on 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 free to play or sports betting on their mobile phones where they are already is, is not, it's not important. It's everything. Uh, you know, that, that is, that, that is the device. Uh, you know, we are mobile, um, you know, we're really mobile only, um, you know, we have 20% of our, of, of our, of our gameplays are on desktop, um, you know, but, but 80% is, is on mobile. And, 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 and so, and especially when you, when you, you know, when you look at these, these states, like, like say Tennessee, um, you know, Tennessee is, 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 is mobile only, uh, mobile and online. Online only, um, and, and and that's a really you know really unique opportunity for people to to, to kind of panel beat their 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 processes uh, around getting people to 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 sign up through through digital means. Yeah. And just from a product and technology standpoint, the the real opportunity around the second screen is that there is a game going on either live or or on TV, and that really is the passion point. Why, why everybody who's betting on sports loves sports to begin with. So, so the opportunity from a product and technology standpoint is, is just to, to, to build that second screen experience that makes sense, it's simple, it's, 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 it's as personalized as it can be, and, and to deliver that while the game is going on because that's the opportunity to tap into me rooting for my favorite team or, or watching games that I care about. And then the, the second component there is that second screen experience is just critical to where where the, the, you know, a significant chunk of betting happens in mature markets, which is during, you know, which is in play betting and gaming. And so again, when we think about those opportunities, I think it will continue to, to evolve, but certainly it taps into the fact that I'm watching something I love and it's also a betting opportunity for gaming operators. Yep. And then you're capturing the consumer behavior, right? And, you know, and, and all that data. You know, so when you get all that data, you know, who's, how are you sharing that? How are you, how are you using that with your, with your, with your clients? So, so we do, we collect a lot of data. Um, and, and we, uh, all of our data is, is captured on, uh, you know, on the behalf of our clients, um, you, you know, but, but on a weekly basis, that report really looks like, you know, looks like this, you know, this, this is how many, you know, games we created. We created, you know, 15 games for you last week. Um, you know, these are all the types of players that played. This is how many times, you know, player X or player Y played, um, you know, these games, uh, player, you know, X only played the football games and player Y actually played the UFC in the golf games. And so what, what, 
you know, and 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 the the BI that we collect is really grounded in the fact that that you know our tech team and our team has built a sports book. We understand the value of of every single thing that the client does on on our site, and and we know that that is uh, intelligence to 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 the operator. And so you know that that is that is critically important for for certainly the operator but also you know when when we when we start to collect information from the operator we can also start to glean um you know how they are engaging with our particular product our free play as well as 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 real money so you know we know that that you know most of the time if there's a free play component by an operator it's going to be played um you know 50% of of all the all the real money players are going to be playing that free play um you know because for 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 various reasons um you know if if is there are there ways that we can maybe entice people to 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 deposit money um if they've already signed up you know what what are some of those games and what are some of those passion points that we can use hey you know this is you know here are here are campaigns that work for the various uh you know personas and 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 the various registrations down into the down into the funnel and when and, you start to think about that kind of data, at least what I hear, is that Chalkline potentially can be a very effective partner on the engagement and retention side, as well as just the pure acquisition side. So it's interesting, you're sort of describing yourself as an acquisition partner, and that may be where the, the core need and focus is today. But as you see Chalkline evolving, it sounds like you guys can play a very meaningful role in helping partners on engagement and retention, kind of the full life cycle uh, of a customer, does that? How do you guys think about that? I completely, I completely agree, and 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 really, I mean, you know, it it costs so much money right now. I mean, you know, player player acquisition costs are so high um, that if you're an operator, you should be completely thinking about, regardless of how big your player pool is, about retaining those customers because it will cost you six x, seven x you know, 8X, 10X to go out there and find another, another customer than, than to simply just kind of keep, you know, keep these customers, you know, happy and engaged and entertained um, and, and provide them, you know, with, with personalized experiences. And uh, uh, as, we, as we look at retention, and I think just back to the data question, the, the, the more you play, the more you, you engage with a book, the more different types of games you play, uh, the smarter the, the chalk line becomes real time. So if we ever divine that you're from, I'm sitting in Nashville, Tennessee right now. So as soon as, as, soon as chalk line games figure out that I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, uh, I'm only going to get Tennessee state level engagement. So that's a real time data point that actually shapes the experience of playing a game, the follow-up emails, the results emails, everything ties me to, to Tennessee. Uh, but then also some of those other data points to the question, they help shape the future engagements that I have so that I do, like Daniel said, if I see that you profile and you're a persona that's a, a UFC, you're every Saturday night, you're checking in on, on the UFC bout, um, that allows me to, to, to build personas where I can automate a lot of my marketing, I can reduce my overall cost of, of, of retention, there's a true retention cost there, and we do it by by gleaning data from the chalk line experiences that we build, and so, so so both both to acquire new customers and then and then exactly to the point of your question, once you have them in the door, you have them engaged. How do you work them into the next right step? And that's a critical part of game data that we take every time somebody plays a chalk line game. And both in terms of the the original the database, the capturing of that information, the analyzing, and then the serving of the automated marketing. Are you guys building all that in house, or do you partner with tech other companies to, on the technology side? I mean, to deliver all that. So I'll I'll take take that one. I mean, so we 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 partner, um, you know, with 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 companies. So you can imagine that we're we're we you know, we do use a number of AWS products that help with some of our our um, our, our uh, products uh, marketing and automation and, and scaling. Um, but I think that the 
the, the needs and the opportunity for the industry right now are so are so vast um, that it really does require that you have a network of partners. Um, so whether it's us, the, the partners we work with, the question earlier was, what are some of the data points that we use? Well, for some of our clients, every time somebody plays, we immediately send a data package to their CRM. So, so that's an example of CRM and ad tech and other ways the data need to flow through the through 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 our ecosystem and, and interact with other ecosystems. It just requires that you have have good partners and you have real clear lines for where your platform begins and, and ends and, and where others uh, can take that data handoff. So I actually have one more question about uh, social media or uh, I guess a question you can call a bit out of left field. Um, are there any influencers <clears throat> on social media today in, in the sports betting world? Like, I, I, I don't even know if they allow that on Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, you know, I've seen you know people post a bunch of stuff, but is, is that are there any, or is that allowed? And are there any influencers? Yeah, with without a doubt, I, I think that uh, I think that there is a that there is massive growth that will happen in the in the sport in the sports betting communities. I think that sports betters um, are are are. are they gravitate towards uh, towards influencers and around communities. You know, there's the Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings group, and there's all these team groups. And you know, I'm a Liverpool uh, fan, and I'm a Manchester United fan. So, so, so it, it's already um, you know a little tribal to begin with. And I, I just venture to say that people that that have influence over those over those groups, I, I think, are are going to play a, a huge role. And and we're starting. We are starting to see the the, the importance of of influencers um, already in the, in the U.S. market. I you know I I can't help but think that that Barstool um, you know is is a really good example of that. Um, there's there's some other there's some uh, you know other um, you know smaller more regionalized um, you know uh, uh, media uh, personalities uh, that that are um, you know that can that can wrap their arms around you know betting inclined individuals and and help them through that process. And 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 there's a lot of different ways for them to monetize their their involvement there, whether they're an affiliate or or you know with 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 Portnoy and and, and Barstool that they, they they're part of a book now, um, but but I I certainly think that there's a lot of 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 opportunity in 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 influencers, um, you know over the next over the next two two to three years. Joe, you probably have some good opinions about that as well. Yeah, I, th I think certainly some of the the, the bigger influencers are, there are that have built a large social following and a large audience. And they spoke about betting before, so the Clay Travises and Pat McAfee's they 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 immediately signed deals. I think uh, you know with with sports books because they 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 are influencers by definition. I think some of the opportunities when it comes to to social and it's a little bit different way of thinking about it. Um, but but anybody who's familiar with the European betting markets and, and we've got uh, an office and clients in Africa, WhatsApp is a critically uh, uh, important app for 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 betting and and, and closed loop uh, sharing with with friends. So I think there's the macro influencers, but also there's a real opportunity with micro influencers. So people who play games with each other, every good game has a, will have a strong virality coefficient, and it's really tapping into to the games and products and building games and products uh, that can tap into that, whether whether it's supporting large level influencers or one to one or small closed loop influencer groups. <clears throat> That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd say that is interesting. And somewhere maybe in between those two groups, like I'll just give an example, uh, sort of on a medium, my, my, my son is 19 years old. Uh, and he, you know, I see that him and his friends are, you know, placing bets here. Yeah, it's 10 bucks, 50 bucks here, but they're doing it very frequently, high, very high engagement. And he and his friends will say things to me now pretty regularly. Oh, I threw 10 bucks down on this, you know, ACC college basketball over under because they're following an influencer that in their minds and, you know, they're 19 year old idiots. So you can you know, take it for what it's worth. But but they do have very niche already and fragmented. Like I look at this guy for college basketball over unders. I go to this influencer to see what he's saying about, you know, intradivisional matchups in football, whatever it may be. So that's sort of in between one on one and bar stool as an acquisition influencer are experts within certain niches that are really making suggestions that these kids are are following and listening to. 
Great, great point in, in that level of granularity uh, in, in social influencer spectrum that is starting to happen and it's still the first quarter. So you can imagine just how much deeper it's gonna get over time, but that is that is a very real development uh, in the past two and a half years of regulated sports betting in the United States. And, and I and I think that what we're going to see as well is is that you've you know the the numbers for 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 the for some of the big operators have come out and you know billions of of dollars was spent on on marketing in 2020, and I think there's going to be challenger brands that are going to to look at uh you know look at the space and and just like they say you know boxers you, you know how you you fight a boxer and you box a fighter um you, you can't go toe to toe with them on on spending on 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 marketing and so. So, you know, what are those ways that, that you can be a little more aggressive, maybe a little more grassroots? Um, and, and I think that we're going to see some of that in a very local level as, you know, some of those local influencers um, just in the state of, of Indiana or just in the state of Michigan, um, you know, that, that carry a lot, of, a lot of weight, but maybe only in, only in certain states. You think that there's, if that occurs or probably one that occurs uh you think we're we're risking kind of going back to how it was in the 70s and 80s where you have uh these uh quote-unquote football experts giving you uh winners <laughs> and if you call them and give them a thousand dollars well I, yeah, yeah, it's funny uh so so just recently the, the uh th- there was a, a relationship that was that was done uh between um the Vegas Golden Knights and a and a and a touting service, a, a picks uh, prediction uh, service, and and there was a lot of lot of fanfare in the media around whether or not this is you know something that that the Vegas Golden Knights should be associated with, um, y- you know, there's there's a I, I think I think that there's 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 a fine line I think between you know saying hey these picks are you know are for sure going to win or hey these are some this is some ideas and some thinking about you know how you need to look at you know these particular games. If you're a football, you know, if you're football better, you know, these are these are stats you need to consider. And I think that, you know, we come out of the 80s and and the 90s and 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 around these kind of tout services. But it feels like um, the information still needs to be provided, um, you know, through, you know, through various media channels just around, you know, educating people on, on, you know, how important, uh, you know, a quarterback is to 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 the line movement um, or to the point spread. And 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 that is you know that is always going to be incredibly valuable information. Um, I, I think um, you know either either that's coming from the book. When I ran a book, I used to tell everybody, "Hey, we've got a lot of money on this, and we've already moved these lines. Like this is what's happening." Um, and I, I didn't mind doing that. Um, you know, I have a feeling that 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 level of information will, will certainly you know become um, you know pretty prevalent across uh, you know across the industry. And one thing that I will add from a data uh, data technology standpoint is the the amount of data that is available and that is being digested by people and given for free and 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 sort of you know just almost usurping the old school touts uh, that you know you where you were paying you know X dollars per month is you've got quants giving away this data for free to better so it really is changing the dynamic of that conversation in a really interesting way and and as the the I think the MIT Sloan conference is an example of, of you know something that um, uh, you know, something that's really grown as a result of all of the data that's available. So it's an exciting time, whether you're working on your, you're on the, the betting side and the gaming side, or you're on the, the betting side, just from, from what, what data is available. And, and, and the last point, Good. Sorry, the last point on that on that is that uh, the betting lines in New Jersey are going to look very different than the betting lines in Nevada, and are going to look very different than the betting lines in in Tennessee. Just just depending on the types of betters. So so you know, uh, saying that uh, a particular book is 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 minus three and a half on 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 one team, I, I think that 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 risk managers and having run a book, um, you know, I, I, if I'm a risk manager on on a, on a sports book and I'm in multiple states, I am certainly going to be changing the lines based on based on some of the criteria. And so we are going to see, um, you know, arbitrage opportunities may maybe between between various books, uh, just because they're they're taking so much money on a on a hometown or a, or on a particular favorite or, or on a particular outsider uh, that 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 another state, you know, probably they're probably not going to get much money on. Yeah, ju- just you know, so going back to what Joe said about the data, you know, it, it's eventually going to become a currency. You know, that that well, data is going to be extremely valuable, and that's what really kind of got Russell, you know, and Matt, myself excited about this business coming from the technology side and seeing what we had seen in media and entertainment and how important data has become. 
you right. know, and the experience of data art overseas with Betfair and having, you know, been in that business for 10 years and now looking at the US, we look at this as an opportunity, so much tech opportunity um, that's gonna come, that's gonna come from this. You know, one of the things being in New Jersey and going to the devils, I noticed you guys just did a deal with uh was it play up? Speaking of uh what's we that did. what's yeah, what's that gonna now? How am I gonna be marketed here as a New Jersey person? What's that what's that deal all about? Because so so we are we are providing we are providing uh the free-to-play games um for uh for play up to leverage their relationship with uh the New Jersey Devils. So I, I come from sports marketing, pure sports marketing, and right. and and when you sponsor, you know, a league or a team or a stadium, you know, you need to leverage that, let everybody know that you're that you're doing this and uh and so yeah, we came in as as the free to play supplier with uh, with play up in New Jersey to provide uh, you know the, the the fans of the New Jersey Devils with with really fun, engaging uh, you know free to play games to to play you know prior to the games and 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 during the games eventually and uh, yeah and just and just and just create awareness for for play up. And, and the activation for play up takes place during the, the pregame show. So it's always on game day. It's always a couple hours before when that's a, a time when people who are betting inclined are certainly leaning in and they're watching the devil. So I think it really does represent a sensible brand activation for, for play up, but also it's good for the devils because it drives further engagement for their product, um, which is the, the players on the ice. Yes. I was thinking going back to the data conversation, how both the devils and play up are going to be very interested in that data and activating it oh without and, a doubt and finding me because i'm not a devil's fan at all i'm a bruins fan but i end up going to devil's games to watch hockey but i will be a data point and for some reason they're going to think i'm a devil's fan no, no. <laughs> <laughs> infuriates me that's right yeah well uh, joe will take that and hard code in that kevin twitchell is not a devil's fan <laughs> right yes speaking of personalization <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have me wrong. <laughs> right, you got me right with your Nets and stuff, though. The, the stuff you did with New England Sports Network is good. You Fabulous. got me as a Bruins Fabulous. fan there. Yes, Bo Sox. That's right. Yeah, Russell. Well, yeah. To you know, close things out here, uh, let's talk about you know <clears throat> what do you guys see happening uh, over the next several years in the sports betting market? Uh, do you see new entrants coming in? or any new trends in consumer behavior? Well, I, just around the consumer behavior, I, I think that, I think there is, uh, uh, we talk about it inside of Chalkline uh, to never overestimate the the, the American sports better. Um, I, I think that there's just, uh, if there's if there's anything that, that we are reading uh, from the data coming out of say New Jersey, where, you know, it's been, you know, sports betting has been live for a couple of years. Um, one out of every two dollars is earned by the sports books uh, through parlays, which is you know not a real sophisticated gamble. It's not a real sophisticated bet. Um, you know, it, it's it's um, you know it's just stringing together you know two or three or four events, um, and 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 it's fun, uh, but but it's it's unlikely, um, and and so you know. As, as 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 late as two and a half years, I, I think you know that's that's one data point. But we're starting to see that same uh, you know those those same uh, trends in other states, and and so um, you know I, I know that a lot of people talk about you know pricing and and what are all of these you know all of these levers to get people in um, into their sports book. I, I think I think simplicity is is going to win out, um, and and making um, you know a complicated process like registering and depositing, if you can make it as simple as possible, um, you know, great and and. and and also just placing their first wager. Um, you know, a lot of people are completely interested in sports betting. It, it is, it is permeating every single, uh, you know, sports cast that that we that we watch on TV. But but there's an intimidation factor that still exists. I think for a lot of Americans, the American Game Association talks about 30 million Americans are going to place their first wager. That's a lot of people. But but that's a lot of people to educate as well. And so. I feels like you know whoever it is that can can make things really simple for those first time uh, users and, and engagement. I think is 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 certainly going to 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 win out. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, the the, the part to me that the parlay uh, um, kind of you know fraction of uh, of the actual um, uh, uh, number of the, what the house takes in is uh, kind of shows a, you know there. A large number of casual betters, because from my understanding, it, you know, sharps usually stay away from 
parlays or teases. Yeah. So so this shows more kind of the, the casual gambler entering the market. Without a doubt. And 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 in fact we're start we're seeing that grow that that you know it's only twenty percent of the of the total handle, but it's it's fifty percent of the hold. And and that grew mm. from twenty nineteen to twenty twenty. So so as states, um, you know, as we progress and 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 as you know, you know, the longer states are are open for, for legalization, the more casual betters are going to come because because as soon as a state opens up, all of the all of the people who completely understand how to bet are gonna go in and they're gonna they're going to set up accounts and they're going to start wagering. It, it's everybody else that's a little hesitant. And I, and I learned this, you know, running an online horse racing business, people were incredibly intimidated to place that wager, whether that was at the track or, or online. Um, and so they just didn't do that. So it just took, it just takes a while. And so, you know, when we see year three and four in New Jersey, I think we're going to see an even more, um, you know, a, a, a larger dis- disproportionate amount of, 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 of parlays that are being wagered, you know, versus, um, you know, the, 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 the really the really fine kind of single bets that are that are five percent margins yeah because because a parlay it can make it easier for somebody new to bet because you're, you're getting not you know you're not betting a line you're getting you know two to one three to one whatever ten to one odds and it Correct. looks like you know gravy but <laughs> that, yeah they're hard they're, they're harder certainly but but also you know i think what people um you know there's a lot of lottery players out there they, they understand that if you know i buy a lottery ticket you know the chances are 280 million to one or, or whatever the numbers are and 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 but, but that doesn't prevent people from buying the lottery ticket they, they still want they still want a chance they want skin in the game and, and so you, you know i think with with parlays it's, it's like hey listen i'm in tennessee let me just string together all of all the tennessee teams you know because i'm I've, you know i'm passionate about them, um, you know, and, and the odds might be, you know, 25 to one, uh, but I'll put five bucks down. And if I lose it, okay, fine. But the next time they all play, I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to do it again. And if it ever hits, then yay, you know, yay, Tennessee, yay, me. Um, so, so that, that is, I think that, you know, those are some of the things that we're seeing from a customer perspective, I, as far as like new entrants, um, you, you know, I, it really interesting to see at the, at the end of 2020, we saw Bally's, uh, you know, buy uh, sports betting software, uh, buy a DFS uh, business, buy uh, one of our competitors, uh, uh, a sport caller, you know, uh, uh, you know, piece those piece those those pieces of technology together um, and, and and really push hard into the into this online sports betting and online gaming, um, you, you know, perspective. And, and it was, you know, relatively out of out of nowhere. Hard Rock Digital, um, you know, ha- have now done a deal where, where, where they're going to be pushing hard in, into online gaming. I have a feeling that there's probably three or four major entrants that will come into the United States and we just, you know, we just don't know who they are, um, you know, whether they're overseas or, or they're, you know, you know, organic to the U S um, I think we're going to, we're going to see a lot of, uh, uh, of additional players uh, come into this market simply. I mean, if you saw any of the annual results, um, you know, over the past couple of weeks from the major players, uh, they're all, there's so many chips that are being pushed into the, into the U S sports betting and, and I gaming industry. Interesting. That's great. It's been, it's been, we could go on all day, Russell. You guys are great. I feel like, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm living in one of your webinars. Your your webinars are great, by the way. I feel like I just, I just feel like I just participated in one, but you guys have a, a, a a big company to run and, and you've taken a lot of time with us. And this has been, this has been great. We literally could talk all day. And I think 2021 for you guys, is just going to be huge Um, with everybody coming out of their caves and everybody gambling and, and it's really, you know, what you're what you're involved in is, I think, very exciting. Awesome. Um, and it's been this has been a great conversation. And I think we'll just have to keep do it again. Hey, you know, to, you regroup at some point and, and pick another. Things subject. are going to look yeah. d- dramatically different, probably in six months time and yeah. 12 months time. I mean, it, it's this, I this think industry we is changing so yeah. fast. I think we, we, should, we should regroup and, and keep checking in like this. Of course. Happy yeah. to do it. Well, well, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Joe. We uh, really appreciate your time today. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so Russell. So much for having us.